Now I am recording, and if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the first six minutes of the show. If you want to make sure to catch the whole show, because YouTube version, you miss a little in the beginning, you miss a little at the end, make sure you go to Facebook and like the Liberty Principal Facebook page. The link is also in the YouTube description. And if you're just joining us on YouTube, and if you're still watching on Facebook, and you better be or else, uh, I am Paul Gordon. And I am here with Lou Sander of the Freedom Fiends. By the way, I do want to mention you did an excellent show last night on uh, Bastia. And I guess you got into a little of uh, de Tocqueville. And you mentioned, I didn't even know that Bastia and Prudhomme had a uh, debate. And apparently that didn't go so well. It sounded like Prudhomme won Facebook troll on him uh, from the report that you gave me. Prudhomme pretty much says, you're an idiot. That's pretty yeah, much the... it, it. It devolved into, uh, uh, well, it wouldn't be Godwin's law. What, what's it called when uh, when a Facebook argument just turns into calling each other nasty names? Daily conversations? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty last, much. Last, last pretty night much. I did the first part called Breaking the Law with, with Bastiat. Uh, next week... I will be joined by Randy England, and we will be going a little bit harder and talking about how the law did not do what it was supposed to do. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna call that Bastiat Part Two: Law Breaks You. Ooh. Oh yes, Law Breaks You. Um, um, Jacob wanted to let you know that uh, what you're referring to with the conversation is, I'm gonna say s posting because we're trying to keep this. Uh, family friendly so i'll just say i'll just say s posting that's what schumer you posting schumer posting there you go or, or uh hashtag not my fan posting as in the one that ate the the schumer the horse but that's schumer. all right he can he can wash it down with a tide pod oh that's, literally i hope he does yeah. i actually i hope he does so we're going to play the bump for our first segment and we're going to get to our first story and let's get and you actually have some stuff on this i have some stuff on this i i don't know this segment could be long because this is a pretty i think it will be it's a pretty incredible story i'll just say that and i'll and i'll give you a little teaser before i hit the bump the story is the response much more than the story itself our course of association shortening the leash on their pets we cover stories of the state, the government, the coercive enterprise, the coercive association, plotting to or succeeding in shortening the leash on those they presume to rule. Welcome to a shorter leash. Yeah, except this time it's it's not really the government that's actually shortening the leash, right? This would be a case of sometimes the slaves brand themselves and keep themselves in line. Yeah, this is pretty stunning. So uh, I'll, I'll start off with uh, uh, reading an, uh, a bit from the part that I wrote on iState.tv, and the title of that story is Patriot Teacher of the Year nominee suspended for alleged assault on student who refused to stand for pledge. Now, when you read that title, you probably think, oh, yeah, yeah, he's one of us if, if you're a conservative. But you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> you're gonna be she. Very... Yeah, I said she, right? You said he. No, I didn't say he or she. At first, at first you said he. Patriot Teacher of the Year nominee surrend surrendered, yeah, suspended for alleged assault on student who refused to stand for pledge. If I said he, I... You know what? If I never mind, I was gonna make a John McAfee did you vote, but I won't do did that. Did you just assume that teacher's gender? I did. I think I did actually. And so Fox News they recently covered a story of a gym teacher, and yes, it's a she. Hold on, let me show you a picture of the gym teacher here. Let me. Oh, let me I, I, I've up. seen it. I guess no, no, no. I'm showing the studio audience there. Oh. There's a picture of the gym teacher, and you'll see that I've strategically placed her next to a picture of. What the Pledge of Allegiance originally looked like, a little girl holding the flag, and the other students giving the flag the proper Nazi salute, also called a Bellamy salute. Just just 
Just want to drive that point home. So uh, the, the story, actually, you brought this to my attention. And at first I was like, man, eh, I don't care. Whatever. Not, not really interested in this. And then you showed me the comments. I was like, okay, now I'm interested in this story. Uh, so, so the story alleges that some kid wouldn't stand, and so she, quote-unquote, assaulted the kid. And there have been various claims, and one, teacher, one, one person who alleged to know what happened, so some, some commenter, said that they, they, all, she, all, all she did was grab the kid's arm and pull the arm up. To what I say, okay, let's just assume that's all she did. Let's just operate on that, present, on that, pre, on that premise. So, so for, for a context here, I've given you already, I've talked about the history of the Pledge of Allegiance with the Bellamy salute. Well, Edward Bellamy, he's a, he's a freaking socialist who Ed wrote Francis. the pledge. What's that? Francis. Francis. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, uh, definitely Francis, not Edward. Uh, I think so, it was his brother. Maybe, maybe. Well, either way it is Francis. So he wrote the Pledge of Allegiance as, as a way to nudge Americans away from individualism and towards collectivism. And it was also designed conveniently to sell flex. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing was to move them from, collective, from individualism to collectivism. So I want you to have that in your head. This teacher, this patriotic teacher that the conservatives are, are championing are saying, she did nothing wrong. She literally forced a kid to stand and take part in a ritual that was designed by a socialist to nudge America towards socialism. That's what your folks are celebrating. And, and also, you guys are big law and order folks, rule of law folks. She broke the rule of law and order, man. Case of West Virginia State Board of Ed versus Barnett in 1943. Uh, the Supreme Court, I would say feeling particularly benevolent that day as the black robe masters of the land, they determined that the Pledge of Allegiance could not be forced on children, that children could choose not to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, that they didn't have to participate in the Pledge in, at all. So just keep that in mind, and Lou, now you, now I have comments, but you have comments, so let's just go with your collection of go ahead share with us yeah. the the joy i, I want to throw a couple more tidbits out there first um it was also to move towards the idea of uh of nationalism at the time and, and the, the, it started dissolving after the after the war of northern aggression but people identified not as americans not as united states citizens but as people from Pennsylvania, Michigan, and it, it, it was it was more no pun intended literal statism than nationalism, and this whole thing of this you know one nation under God and all this other stuff, uh, the single nation that's something that really started stemming under Lincoln and well, the well one yeah okay go ahead at, be, because. It, it used to be they would say these United States, meaning all these several uh, nation states. And then when the Constitution came in, uh, it, it was the same thing, but it was it was still under one large nation. But eventually, it became the United States. Yeah. So there was a there was a difference. I mean, ask yourself this: growing up, I know for me, growing up. The United States. I had no idea what it meant. I just heard the United States. It was the thing. It mm -hmm. was the you know, it, it is was always will be. It had a certain factitious seduction to it. Factitious just means man made. So I didn't really think about what it meant. It was like a label. It was a brand. The United States, and it. I I never thought about it as like the fifty states. I mean, if you really ask me, oh yeah, there's fifty states, but it was the United States. And I would see some places every once in a while that referred to them as the themselves as the United States. And I'd be like, well, that's weird. You're not the United States. We're the United States. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so branded in me. And yeah, yeah that was, that was government so, schools. I do have an alternate title for this article. Okay. Are you ready? The, yeah. Jihadist issues fatwa against young boy. <laughs> that's. 
not that's that's kind of what it is except yeah. it's not a jihadist because it's, it's my actually, my actually actually it is it's my extremism so it's okay it's not my it's not a jihadist if it's my extremism and it's not extremism if it's my extremism it's okay. it's you know what i'm saying you get how it's it social, works it's not socialism and nationalism when we do it so anyway <laughs> that's, I, that's it Going going to the comments from Facebook and then also the article on the Fox News website. And if you have not been vaccinated for stage twenty Ebola cancer of the brain, <laughs> I would advise that you don't get too close to your speakers on this. Um, yes. Maybe maybe good, listen good through advice. some earbuds. Get your your biohazard radiation suit because the comments are just literal cancer. First one goes: If my kid doesn't stand for the national anthem, which would never happen. You have the right to yank him or her up by the hair. Uh, well, apparently he doesn't want to wow. sue his kid's gender. But anyway, you have the you have the right to yank him or her up by the hair. Oh my God! You abdicate violence against your own children. Yup, just STFU. They will live after having their hair pulled and be more respectable because of it. I don't raise snowflakes, boys or girls. That's the state. The state is the only modern religion that still demands child sacrifice. Yeah, this 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 individual, is this a male or a female that we know? I believe it was a male. A male. So this male has decided that if if their child were to in any way, shape, or form contradict the will of the free land the land of the free the home of the brave land of liberty you know bill of rights and all that that child will get their their proverbial uh beat because that's mm -hmm. what you do in the land of the free that's that's how you make people free you you terrorize them until they understand that they're free yeah. Now, never mind that the person that is so upset about the incantation not being recited, uh, because if, if, if everybody doesn't recite the incantation, then that means that the sun won't rise and, and the crops won't grow. But anyway, the person that's, that's so upset about this kid not standing up to pledge allegiance to the government's flag, uh, the one that is so absolutely positively triggered brags about not raising snowflakes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have stayed up with us on that, and if you're following along at breakneck speed that Lou just ran there. But if you have, I think, I think it, you're getting the ironies. What it proves is that left and right wing snowflakes both melt at the same temperature. Okay, the next one. The far left loves this. By the way, the pledge was written by somebody from the far left. But anyway, right. I'm sure this kid that, that, was that, already. That's, that's the point I made in the beginning, yeah. yes. I'm sure this kid was already a behavior problem child and well-versed in manipulating circumstances that make it appear that they are the victims. They only have to watch TV to be exposed to their parents' conversations to develop the skill. We should be supporting the teacher and expose the kid and the family. Apparently, this is some vast left-wing conspiracy to no, it's get a... Not to, no. to entrap a teacher into assaulting him over not reciting the incantation. Oh, my God. I actually should, have a nosebleed right now. Should I, I be saying incantation or should I be calling it a surah? A surah? Like uh, is uh, Islamic magic religious decree? How do you mean? Yeah. 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 Be well, I mean, I, let, let, let's face it. The when it comes to the when it comes to the idolatry of the flag, there's very little difference between the modern American conservative, particularly the Christian conservative, and a radical Muslim jihadist. So yeah, that's, it, 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 it's state it's status radical fundamentalism. There's only one difference between the two. You know what that is? What's that? The I'm, I'm going to say the because not the all Muslims Christian, have acted not by their whole holy book. No, no, not not all Christian conservatives alike. So I don't want to say this about all of them, but a huge chunk of them that are that I would call the, especially the more extreme, the the ones that would write crap like this, the the difference between them is that the Muslim radical is in a position of weakness, and so therefore they must rely on violence to try to take power, whereas the Christian radical, well, they. They rely on violence to 
control power, but their violence is civil violence. Their violence has a nice little sticker put on the plane or the drone, so it's different. See, see how it's different? Like if the Christian conservative is cheering on the bombing of Iraq with drones in the name of my freedoms, that's different because because it's being done with equipment that have really nice stickers on them. Whereas the Muslim radical has no such nice stickers. So they just got to show up with like suicide belts and stuff. So it's so ghetto. So ghetto. Really. They're so de classe with their killings. I mean, if you're going to do your killings right, you got to do it with a nice shiny piece of equipment that has really nice stickers on it. I think that's the lesson. What do you say? I really can't argue with that. Stickers. <laughs> Stickers make it. Stickers, Stickers make the world go round. That's it. Or or they drive There's an deep old commercial. craters into the ground. There was an old commercial on LRN. It was about uh, liberty stickers. And it says, you've read the Constitution. You've done this and you've done that. But one thing is missing. Stickers! And the Freedom <laughs> Fiends, the Freedom Fiends adopted that and um, came up with the, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Uh, the the buttons commercial. Okay. The old oh, buttons. I have a comment here from John Smith who says, freedom is slavery. And Jacob LaBelle says, beat the liberty into them. Yeah, that's how you do it. Ooh, I, I like that. Jacob also said Sarah means chapter verse. Okay. And and then Larry, Larry Cousins, Larry, I don't know, one of these days, Larry, you're going to get in a helicopter and you're not going to come back. He says, amazing how the anarcho misfits are always, always expert at raising children. Ah, oh, Larry, that's sweet of you. And Don says, I've seen dead Christians and Muslims look almost exactly the same. That's true. That's true. Most of them do. And John says, get your stickers at agora.threadless.com. I endorse that comment. I I have <laughs> I have a comment here or a so this is Mighty D. This this mine was from the article itself, the comments under the articles. I got some from there. So Mighty D says, My high school Spanish teacher hauled off and punched me in the back one time. I didn't say anything because I was being a pain in the butt. I definitely deserved it. And uh, a, a plain, a plain Lomerica responded or said, uh, "Fire that ignorant lady! Never allow her to teach her again, and uh, and sue her for damages." I'm like, great. I I agree. And then a couple of responses to this from Austin, whatever your name is. And you are the I'm not reason. giving out names in, in, when, as I read the comments. Oh, you're not? Okay. No. I, 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 I won't anymore. <laughs> but it, I, in, It's a public it, forum, but... They're in the it, article. So Austin mm -hmm. said, and you are the reason kids act the way they do. In other words, her saying that you shouldn't beat on the kids is the reason that kids are the way they are. Yeah. And they, Okay, I've, I've, I've got one that is way off the charts. Okay, I, let's... Th this one, I got so excited when I see it. When I was in school, standing for the pledge was almost a Pavlovian response. Well, no Schumer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm baffled to where this dissidence for things American came from in, in the most recent years. Well, maybe they're opposed to socialism. But anyway, uh, and there's numerous <laughs> comments maybe. saying... Yeah, I, I, I would not brag about being Pavlovian in my response to things. Uh, because what that really means is you weren't thinking you were strictly conditioned. You rang a bell or somebody rang a bell and you salivated. Somebody threw out a flag, you stood up and you're, you're, you're no smarter than a psychiatrist dog. And with well, that level of obedience, I'm going to say probably a German shepherd, but there's numerous <laughs> comments calling, calling this person teacher of the year, give this Patriot a raise. She has mm -hmm. my vote for teacher yeah. of the year. Yeah, that's where I get my title from, that Teacher of the Year, Patriot of the Year. I saw that a few places. 
So that's that's where my title came from because she's the she's a patriot teacher of the year. You know, you're a patriot if you grab some kid by the arm and force him to stand up and salute the flag the way a good socialist. Oh wait, <laughs> they should move to North Korea. They I think they have it. They have this whole thing a uh, lot better down there than than we do here. I have Mand- mandatory patriotism. Mandatory patriotism, mandatory freedom, mandatory freedom now. So I got, I got another comment here. Oh, I think, oh, I think that, uh, I got the same comment. The far left loves this. I'm mm-hmm. sure this kid was you th- you, that comment. I'm sure this kid was already a behavior problem child. You know, nothing whatsoever about this kid. All you know is that this kid decided not to stand for the pledge. That's the only thing you know. You know nothing more. That one act, that one act. So what you're saying, essentially, if if, if I don't bootlick hard enough, if I don't worship at the great idol of the state with with as with as much vigor and and public awe as as you think I should, that probably means that I have a a history of being a pretty horrible person you're describing you're i mean you're 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 describing a kid and you are demonizing a kid and and, and ascribing to this kid some very very baseless uh pretty vulgar characteristics that would put this kid in a kind of a a no touch no association zone you're going for full on hardcore permanent ostracism and you don't see how you sound like a fascist there. You don't you don't make that connection there. And all the while you're going to do that, you're going to tell me that you're the person that stands and this is I don't know in this case if this person would do this, uh but I can say from experience that I I I've, I've seen and heard these comments directly from people who while they're saying this on one side, on their other side, they're talking about my constitution and my bill of rights, and we need to get back to the bill of rights. And by the way, if you don't stand for the flag, yeah, throw you under a bus and throw you out and and declare that you are one of the untouchables. You were no longer one of us. You haven't sufficiently chanted the one of us song. You, you, you go see the movie Freaks. Look at the end. That's who you are. You're the guys gathered round at the end. You take the pretty girl and you cut her up and you turn her into an egg person. And uh, and then she's one of us. That's what you want to do to all of us. You want to turn all of us into egg people so that you all feel content with your self-inflicted disabilities. I want to go to a couple more comments. I got some really good juicy stuff here. Okay. Teen pregnancies out the roof. Teen bullying up like crazy. Parents need to teach their children to show a little more little respect for people in authority, including their teachers. And you know what? If your child says the Pledge of Allegiance each morning, she will not get pregnant. <laughs> hey. This, That's basic if, fact. If, if this teacher is forcing this kid to say the Pledge of Allegiance and, and laying her hands on him, isn't that bullying? Do you ever think that maybe that's where kids learn bullying? Stuff like that. Another one. I work at a military school. We don't get physical, but trust me, they stand for the national anthem. Salute to LOL. They don't want to skip that. I love the way you read that. <laughs> I don't know if they wrote it like that, but man... I love the way you read that. You put a lot of oh, feeling into that. Yeah, I, I, I channeled the authoritarianism. Here's another one. In the 80s, even the Jehovah's Witnesses stood. They just didn't put their hand over their heart. I say good for her. What's today's youth? What today's youth needs is more SWATs. Hashtag gym teacher. Okay, so so Jacob... Jacob hang, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay. I, I want to. I want to. I got a good a comment bit. though. But go ahead. Okay, Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't celebrate holidays. There's a lot of things that they do, uh, and and they don't stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and and all that other stuff because that's nationalism, that's idolatry, and we are in a time where nationalism has merged with American Christianity. Yeah. Okay? 
it, it, it's almost the same language. And the second command amendment now reads, the right to keep and worship false gods and idols shall not be infringed. And the reason I say that is because the second commandment, quite similar to the, quite similar to the first, is that thou shalt not create idols of any form, and the flag is an idol. Now, people will say, it's not an idol. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of our freedom. And we're not worshiping it. We're respecting it. We're revering it. We're pledging allegiance to it. And if some dirty hippie burns it, we're going to cut off his head. And the and the streets will flow with with the blood of the infidels. Merka Akbar! <laughs> Merka Akbar! Merka Akbar! Yeah. It's... And, that, and that is why I call them jihadists. And it's it's my interpretation... As a Christian, it's my interpretation, subjectively, I'll say, uh, that uh, standing for the flag and participating in, in the state idolatry is, is well, I, I revealed it, it's state idolatry. You can only have two masters, or one master, sorry. You can have only one master, not two. And Yeah, that's, the, and that's Matthew 6.24. No man can serve two masters. Yeah, so that's, pick that's, one. That's, and that's from the Sermon on the Mount. So it's like yeah. the, the blueprint for the Christian life. So it's a pretty significant passage that that's drawn from. So Jake, and as Jake, a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, Christians shouldn't be worshiping uh, crosses and crucifix, right? Are Isn't you, that an are, idol? Are you calling out my cross necklace? Is that what you're doing? You know, I, wear I didn't even, necklace? I didn't even, I didn't even yeah. see that you were wearing it. But doesn't that fall as fashioning an idol? No. Well, I mean, it would depend on how you how you treat it. Well, be, uh, for well, me, it's, it's a it's a it's a reminder. It's yeah, it's a symbol. That's a well, reminder. I, I, but I, I, I but here's the, here's the thing with this with this necklace. I am not expecting anybody to salute this necklace. I don't salute this necklace. I don't get really upset if somebody doesn't respect it or doesn't like it. Or is totally indifferent to it. I don't most, care most Christians at all. are like that. Most Christians are like that. Uh, it, it, if Christians got as excited about people burning the cross as they do the flag, then I think uh, the KKK would have been stopped a long, long time ago. But they're cool <laughs> with burning the cross. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, don't, you don't hear them calling for the beheading or beating of, of, of those dirty hippies for burning the cross. But some dirty hippie burns a flag, they're all over them. Well, I don't know. I, I actually do see people that would be very upset, even among conservatives, that would be very upset if somebody burned a cross. But not because they burned a cross, but because of what it symbolized. So I I think that if somebody in where I live, I live in Bethlehem, PA, and if somebody took on the quote-unquote name of Christ and decided to show up in somebody's home, like a, a black family's home, and set up a flat... Uh, uh, Across and set it on fire. I think bad things would happen to them, really bad things, and justifiably so. So I don't know if that's a, as good an example now as it as maybe used outrage. to be. Oh, I don't know about that. There's there's over the top public outrage at racism that's not even racism. I don't know where you're living. There's, I mean, if <laughs> if I were to. Inadvert if I was on a show with someone and they happened to be black and I said, Hey Joe, you like watermelon? And I know he likes watermelon. I'm not even thinking of anything. I'd be called a racist for that. Are you kidding me? The racism thing is everywhere and everybody's totally on, on guard. I I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's a good example. I think there's plenty of people that would be outraged, but they wouldn't be outraged that they were burning a cross. It's not that their the cross is being burned. It's what the cross means. It's 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 that they know that that means we're going to get you. We're you know it's it's a it's a totally overt racist statement. So that's why. But if you're making the point, you're they're going to get upset if you burn a flag. They will just because it's a flag. They're not going to get upset if you're burning a cross because it's a cross. They're going to get upset because of what that means. If it didn't have that meaning and you burn a cross, most Christians wouldn't get that upset about it. But the same ones that wouldn't get that upset about it would get upset at the burning of the flag. I don't know if that's quite what you meant, but... Uh, Something like that. Yeah, but but I, but I, I, I have very little doubt that 
that there's there's not a lot well you know and and I don't know how things are changing I don't I don't know maybe maybe a month from now maybe a year from now with the backlash crap that's forming and the the counter identitarianism that's rising maybe the outrage won't be as much a year from now I don't know we, we you know it's it's scary things when you see identitarianism uh, and you see it emerge from multiple tribes now. So I don't know where that's going. But certainly everything you're seeing here from the reaction of these people to this woman pulling this kid up, violating their precious rule of law. That's another thing. She's violating their precious rule of law. This is the this is the this is this is, you know, the land of law and order and all that, right? So mm-hmm. why are they celebrating the fact that she she totally violated the Supreme Court order? She's well. Here, here's here's how you here's how you do it. Uh, if it, if they agree with it, it's constitutional. If they don't agree with it, it's unconstitutional. If it's deemed constitutional and they don't agree with it, then that was a misinterpretation or activist judges attempting to legislate from the bench. If it's if it was deemed constitutional and they agree with it, then the system worked ex- exactly as it was supposed to. So basically, it's a no-win situation for somebody who wants to dissent. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm still calling them out on their own terms. And most of the folks that are commenting here, they're not coming from the left perspective. And when I say left, I am referring to their identity. They call themselves the left. There's a there's an aggregate of people that identify as the left and an aggregate of people that identify as the right. Are they really left and right? That's another matter that I've I beat that one into the ground. I think you have too. I think most of the people listening have walked down that road of uh, dissecting the fact that uh, there really is no such thing as left and right when you're talking about the American paradigm or the American political paradigm. But be that as it may, I have. Do you have any more really juicy comments here? I, I, Go and do uh, Jacob's comment because oh, I, yes, I kind I of I can't that. push that off. Oh, yes, yes. I forgot about Jacob's comment. Let me go back to that. And actually, I'm glad you reminded me because I really did want to speak on this. Jacob says, I teach my children to be respectful by respecting them. Just saying. So I don't teach my kids to be respectful because respect is something that is earned. And I actually, I don't even teach my daughter to respect me. I teach, I, 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 I don't, I don't know if I want to say I teach my daughter, but I demonstrate to my daughter that you, if you treat somebody like crap, there's a good chance you may be treated like crap as well. And I try to lead by example. I try to reflect a life of appreciation for what has been given me, especially when people help me out. I try to demonstrate that. And uh, I'm not sending her to school, though, telling her to be respectful to anyone at school. Mm-hmm. I, I, I try to give her a sense of the reality and let her decide how to operate within those parameters. My daughter, I do... I guess a not not a an exact form of peaceful parenting. I don't know if I agree with everything about peaceful parenting. I'm like maybe ninety percent there, but uh, I don't tell my daughter that she should be unschooled. I tell my daughter I really wish that she would choose unschooling, and I'm available and I'm ready and committed to do it. But she's not interested, so she's chosen to go to public school. And I, my daughter, she really loves to get good grades. And, okay, it's like a sport to her. I always let her know if she's striving to get good grades, if that's something she wants to do, I, okay, great, I'm happy when you succeed. But in and of itself, I don't care about good grades. And I definitely don't tell her to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. She does stand, even though she knows how ridiculous it is. And she stands just because she knows What's going to happen to her? Not just from the teachers, but from the kids. And yeah, there was a video. Sorry to interrupt. Well, no, I'm not no, sorry go ahead. to interrupt. Go ahead. Because that's what I do. I interrupt yeah, all fine. the time. If hey, I we apologize all every single time. That's what you I and I do, man. Every single time. Yeah. So, yeah. So zip it. Zip it. 
So anyway, there was a video going around on Facebook not too long ago, and it was this kid. He didn't stand up for the pledge, and some other kid who looks like maybe Joe Dirt's illegitimate nephew or something like that goes behind this kid and kicks his chair out from underneath him, and he's doing that murka thing, showing what a what a hard guy he is because he went and kicked this kid's chair out from under him because he didn't stand and recite the incantation to summon the spirit of Francis Bellamy. Yes. Yeah, I saw that video. All right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, And they don't even have to kick the chair out from under you. All they got to do is look at you. Like, they'll look down their nose at you like, oh, my, my, I mean, I, I don't know what to do about my daughter. It's, uh, she kind of, and, you know, I can't say anything because, you know, when I was 13, she's 13, you know, when I was 13, I was way more concerned with what other people thought of me than I am now, like ridiculously so, kind of like her. And and eventually I I freed myself from having to depend on the opinion of others. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she, the, the opinion of others matters a lot to her. So she stands for the pledge, but but she knows when she's standing that she's only doing it. She's not doing it unthinking. Mm -hmm. She knows darn well I'm making a choice. I just don't want to deal with the aggravation of these people crapping on me, and no, I'm not going to become a state of state face worshiper just because I'm standing and and doing the pledge. The the grief that she will experience by not standing is going to be a lot more than you or I would have if we were at some sort of event and we did not stand. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, it, It'll her, affect her, her social life at a fundamental level. Yes, I, it will be unbelievable. And if she's standing and going through the motions saying, okay, I'm, I'm just doing this so that I don't get attacked, uh, I don't believe in this nonsense, then she's probably a lot, a lot better off than, than most of the people that are blindly reciting this now here's one for you i remember wearing the pledge of allegiance on like the first or second day of kindergarten uh probably the second day because the first day was pretty much a cluster because we're trying to figure out who everybody is and everything else a cluster feinstein but, yeah so <laughs> anyway uh, well cluster bleep has a nice ring to it that's true but as as we were as we're learning this we are taught to re to re to memorize and repeat it but we weren't taught what it meant so if you ask a kindergarten student what does allegiance mean what is a republic oh hell i don't know don't you think that it would be important to teach the children the meaning of the words that they're reciting rather than just they saying, well, the, the, they'll pick it up in a couple of years no because it's, it's indoctrination yeah, Here, it's absolutely indoctrination one. yeah so here's one for you uh let's see Sorry, I have the educators back. We stand for the flag to respect the men and women who died so that student could have liberty. Yes, liberty. You think about that statement, num peanuts. Uh, you, so that student could have liberty. Stand for the flag or else you get no liberty. Here's 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 a here's a three way exchange. Oh, I'm sure you here's, guys that are listening hear it. You hear here's it. Here's a little I'm exchange. Sure. Next time you better stand up, son. That's a bootlicker. The reasonable person says there should be no next time for this ignorant teacher. The bootlicker responds, kids need to learn a little respect in this country. Too many kids just doing whatever they want to do. Look at the result. Look at this nation. Controlled by children. <laughs> Land of Liberty. There, there, kids a, there, shouldn't be able to do what they want to do. Now I understand you don't a, want to let kids. There's a seventy-some-year-old child running the show here. Fire. Go ahead. Well, here's one for you. Uh, I remember somebody talking uh, about children need to be taught to love their country. When when I hear that, I'm thinking, okay, you're going to indoctrinate them to love their country. Why can't they just fall in love with their country on their own? If you have a country that's all that wonderful, then yeah, it should. They you should don't fall have in to love teach them. It. Yeah, you don't have yeah, to teach so, them. So, so they're not teaching children to fall in love with the country. They're not. They're not 
creating a loving relationship that blossoms over time. They're indoctrinating them at the youngest impressionable age, impressionable age. They may as well just be giving them a freaking roofie. The oh, Pledge well, of Allegiance daily. is a roofie. A daily roofie. Here. Yeah. Here, take this. Or a freedom enema. It's also a freedom enema disguised as a symbol of freedom. So you do the math there. I, I want to, we're, we're, we, we ran late on this and we kind of knew we would, but I do want to touch on the next two stories. So even if we don't spend a lot of time on them, uh, but we're actually, not going to grab it and force it to stand up. The stories can stand on their own or not. <laughs> yeah. Nobody will be grabbed by the arm and, and forced to, 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 to stand on their own. And I, I'm like, I don't even have time to play bumps because I just want to touch these briefly. So the longer leash. Oh yeah, this is longer leash. This is longer leash. There you go. You, do you want me to play the longer leash bump? I can. Uh, no, I, I just did. Okay. Never gonna there give up go. a longer leash. Never gonna take a shorter one. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on two stories, and I'm just gonna describe them briefly, and then we're gonna discuss the. The, the ramifications, the philosophical ramifications in a short period of time. Okay, yay us. So the first story, uh, Nigel Farage is pushing for Ireland to follow Britain out of the EU orbit, and the Irish globalists don't like it. Uh, head of his scheduled talk at famed Trinity College in Dublin, Farage is being called a disseminator of false information, and he is he's basically calling on Ireland to have an IR exit, to join with Britain in leaving the EU. And then the second story is... Quick question. How would he feel about Ireland leaving the UK? I don't know. That's a good question. I'd be for that too, by the way. Well, well, actually, if he's talking to... Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I'd, I'd like to ir see everybody ir leave everything. Irexit. 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 Total Irexit. Not just from the EU. So uh, the other story is France prepares for Corsican push for autonomy from Paris. This is now a story that's going to be on my radar. I'm going to start following an I state. So the French are trying to head off another potential regional secessionist movement on the order of what can be seen in Catalonia. The region in question is the island of Corsica, where apparently, I guess they elected a nationalist party to office. So now there are Corsican nationalists who are looking at the French and saying, hey, we want more autonomy, and Macron is going to Corsica for a two-day visit to try to nip the Corsican autonomy movement in the bud. I, I seriously doubt a two-day visit from Macron is, is going to do that. But be that as it may, both of these deal with the topic secession. Let me ask you in general, what is your position on secession as a liberty-creating tool? I think of secession as trying to build an inheritance for your children because I, I, I think it was a life insurance policy. You won't collect on, on it yourself unless you live to be 120. So you're the, the I mean, it's, it, it's a baby step, but ultimately what it does is secession provides a false hope because they're, they're seceding from one government, but they're going to make a, another government. If you look at uh, the history of secession just in America, you had the the, the colonies seceding from the crown, and they went and created a, a, a government that within the first generation, first few years, had uh, – replicated darn near every grievance listed in the in the Declaration of Independence, if not every one of them. Uh, taxes were higher. Yep. I, they, people they people were complaining it, about three percent people were complaining about a three percent beverage tax under the crown and they had a twenty five percent beverage tax laid upon them by the father of the country. And the father of the country had the military go in and put down that rebellion. Right. And the example that I'll give is uh, North, North Korea is – what's the population of North Korea? Let me just, just no idea. check here. I'm just checking. Population North Korea. So North Korea is a po population of 25 million people. So what's the population of uh, California? Because they're talking about California seceding. 
geographically, North Korea is much smaller than California. So California has 39 million people. So imagine if North Korea was a state in the United States of America and it had seceded from the United States of America. It could easily have ended up just like North Korea did. So even though it's seceded and it's a smaller state, the impact on your ability to live the life of your own choosing, well, it's actually a lot worse. It's kind of like what, what Lou was talking about with just now with the, the American colonies seceded from England and the English <laughs> Empire, and they ended up uh, reducing their ability to make their own choices. So secession doesn't always work out. But this is the one area. There, there are two reasons that I support secession. I, uh, I think that it can be a benefit to the advance of liberty for these two reasons. Secession, whether they succeed or not, it, it, it pulls in resources for the coercive enterprise that it has to bring to bear to try to bring the secessionist movement to heal. Resources that it can't then focus on people who are trying to live a more, I'll, I'll say, a dispersed secessionism, if you will. And then, and then the other reason that I support secession is one of, like what's going on over in Rahava. You have very powerful nation states surrounding Rahava, and right now part of Rahava, Afrin, is being invaded by one of those powerful nation states. Again, if those nation states were a lot smaller their ability to bring a coercive force against geographical regions that were not being governed through coercive enterprise models, it'd be a lot more difficult for them to, to carry out that invasion. So it would reduce the concentrated power of coercive enterprises. So for those two reasons, I support secession. But, but a secessionist movement that is designed to pin your hopes on the advance of liberty. Now, I don't support that. I don't think that secessionism in and of itself will actually directly, at least, advance the cause of liberty, although it can help create conditions that allow people to live a more dispersed secessionist lifestyle, if you will. Yeah, I, I, look, at, I look at secession as a partial measure or as a distraction. Um, I, I look at it as false hope. I look at it like it, much the same manner that I that I look at Ron Paul's campaign. He gave people false hope that that you could vote harder and that you could use a, the political system to change the political system, which we know is kind of uh, mm, crazy. But anyway. <laughs> Did you just call Ron Paul crazy? Yes. Okay. No, 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 no. Probably more delusional. But anyway. More delusional. But his so heart's in the I, right place. <laughs> yeah. So what I see happening is rather than going towards the goal of freedom, they're 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 just changing the, the tyranny around a little bit. They're restructuring the tyranny. They're pushing dirt around. Yeah, so yeah, I would make it clear for me, I'm not supporting secession like would I become involved in a secession movement? Would I put my heart and soul into a secession movement? Not at all. But would I be kind of cheering them on as far as mucking things up? Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd be for that. I'd be like, good, muck things up. That's great. But if I was talking to somebody who was part of the secessionist movement, I would not be encouraging individuals to take part in the secessionist movement. I would encourage them to take part in dispersed secession as opposed to a concentrated geographical secession or a distributed, I'll say, a distributed mm -hmm. secession, a whack-a-mole secession. Well, here's a question for you, and this comes down to the notion of making the state more tolerable, which is why I, I don't support men statism or incrementalism, not that incrementalism can actually happen, uh, because there's many reasons why the, the course would go back towards tyranny rather quickly before it even got to men statism. There's a lot of people out there, and they use the slogan, if 10% is good enough for Jesus, it should be good enough for Uncle Sam. Ah, uh. If okay. taxes got if taxes got down to ten percent, how many of the people that are freaking out over taxes right now, the ones that are screaming taxation is theft at thirty five percent, 
how many of them do you think would shut up if it got down to 10%? Because it, it became just a little bit more tolerable. The medicine got a little bit of flavor in it. Yeah. 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 Like I said, you know, it, you know I think I clarified for my point that I made about secession. Secession is not the path towards liberty. And no, I'm, I'm with you as far as minarchism is concerned. The secession is a step towards the side. It, it, it's a lateral, it's a lateral demotion. Secession because, creates uh, uh, secession movements can create opportunities for folks that are taking part in what I am calling, and I'm probably not the first to call it this is the the idea of the uh, the distributed secession. So this is I'm 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 sort I'm sort of seceding myself. I'm not completely seceded. I don't have the power to secede, but I'm working towards seceding myself. And other individuals are working towards seceding themselves. And, and we have networks. We're not all living in one place where everybody can focus in and take us down. We're dispersed. We're distributed. We're like whack-a-moles. You, you pound on one and another pops up over there. You know, the, 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 the trying to secede in one geographical area. That's why I'm very interested in what's going to happen in Rahava. Uh, and, and Rahava, what, do I... I, I have doubts about what will happen with Rafahava. Still rooting them on, and I see how they're trying to play the statist game. They're very, very careful. But even during the period of time that Rahava exists, and I don't know how long it'll exist, but during the period of time, they are making discoveries. They are testing out stateless governance right now. There are things that are going to be learned from, from what happens in Rahava, whether they succeed or fail. There, this is an advance. This is a, this is, I guess you could say, a crash course in statelessness that's happening on a pretty large scale. So, I, I, I see a benefit to that. And Rahava, they're not trying to recreate the state. They're, <laughs> they're you know, as as a matter of fact, they're uh, one of the problems that they have with the other Kurds is because they're not into. Kurdish nationalism. That's not part of who they are. So they are for statelessness. They're not nationalists. So it's hmm. interesting to watch I'm, what's I'm not, going on over there. I'm not really up on the subject, so I, I guess I'm going to have to dig into it a little bit more. Uh, one thing I can tell you, though, is with traditional se secession and the, uh, the the southern states seceding, I, that didn't turn into a libertarian paradise by any stretch of imagination. I, when, when they left, when they left the the things that they did during the war with conscription and income taxes and everything else, they were absolutely no different than the union. So absolutely I mean, no they, different, they, right? Yeah. So, so well, I mean, just became, and the whole trying be, to hold on be, to slavery thing kind of yeah. sucked too. Let's yeah, but, let's but be they be, but they became the union to escape the union. Right. So, but but what 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 I see is in a session is a distraction. If your goal is to obtain liberty. Uh, to, to be completely free and you say, okay, well, we're going to do it by doing this. So your, your goal is now to secede and create a new government. One that's taking away your resources from actually going towards freedom. And by your resources, I mean your energy because you're concentrating on leaving one government to create a new government. And I, I don't know how long it would take for people to say, you know what, Th this whole seceding and, and creating new government doesn't work. And I, quite frankly, I don't think a lot of people would have learned the lesson. But ultimately, you you have to look at the short lifespan of humans. I, there, there's nobody that was alive in the in the founding era, so I, there's nobody to say, ah, yeah, you know what, yeah, we got rid of that centralized government, and then those hooligans came in here with their with their constitutional coup, created a new central government which we didn't want, but they forced it on us, and, and we probably should have burned the, the convention hall down while they were all in there, but we didn't know, and you know, learn yeah. from our lesson, and <laughs> and you don't have that. We can get it right this time. Uh, let's go to our last story because we're. We're, we're already going to run a little late. That's okay. So our last story is the long... And I, and unfortunately, I just put the scene... I don't know if you're looking at the, the Facebook thing. I didn't change the scenes because each segment has a scene. And if you pay close attention to this scene, this scene to me, it 
perfectly captures the overall theme of longer leash that we hit every week. You got a picture of a fence and it's got the American flag behind it. And it's a barbed wire, or whatever chain link mm -hmm. fence. That, that to me is a perfect symbol of what the longer leash is. And even secession, it perfectly fits into that. It's this idea that somehow I'm creating more freedom for myself, but in fact, you're still in the same cage. It's, you've just redefined the cage. But You hung but, up new pictures in your cage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the you theme of the longer you, leash. You traded the six-foot leash for the 72-inch leash. Right, and that's important. And you, you just don't want to go... You don't want to go to the uh, the the two yard leash. That's bad. It's really yeah, because it's only two of them. It's only two. Of them. <laughs> it goes. It goes. I say. So let's get yes, to our. Yes, Jacob, you're right. Secede in your heart. Free your yeah. mind. Your ass will follow. Yeah. Well, secede in your heart, but do more than that. Because well, I'm I'm, I'm I'm I deal with I I I deal with the reality of power and how I think, and so. Secede in your heart. That's great. That's the first place. Once you secede in your heart, then the next part is to figure out where do you stand in your relation to the coercive enterprise and what can you do to tilt the balance of power towards your favor? That's what you do. So that's secession to me. So we'll get to our last story here. And this is the longer leash. And I think I'm going to play the bump for this one. Off the this. leash. Off the oh, leash. I'm sorry. Uh, no, right, right. We're, we're going off the leash. leash. Okay, that's Lou's version, and now here's my version. How are others enjoying lives that exist beyond the reach of the leash of the state, the government, the course of enterprise, the course of association? How, in other words, are people living off the leash, and how might you join them? And that, by the way, that is my daughter. She does bug the for that. That is bug, and you've met bug, so you know bug. Yes. Little bug, Nila. So the the story I'm doing, crypto anarchist says gun control dies with rise of ghost guns. So I'm gonna just well, I'm not gonna read. You you can go to the links and you can read the article. You can read the part that I wrote, and then there's a video. It's an interview of Cody Wilson. But what I really want to talk about here, especially because we're kind of low on time, is. What, what Cody Wilson is doing is I think he is, de he is demonstrating secession in, 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 the, in the distributed manner, not the geographical uh, contiguous manner. And it's a secession of, uh, through, through power, real power. So I see, like we do, we do full auto on Monday, uh, Professor Ramber and I, we do full auto. And we're often, we, we, we talk about the gun control laws that are going on, and we got some crazy stories this Monday to talk about. And and the call is always, you know, well, we got to do something. You know, we got we to gotta make sure the Supreme Court stands up for our rights. And then, no, no, we, we got to vote for the right people. <laughs> we got to vote for the right people to pass the laws to protect our rights. And, you know, the gun grabbers, they're never freaking done ever freaking done they're always going to want to take whatever power they can from individuals who might get in their way and yeah having guns is a real expression of that power so cody wilson's solution is to change the dynamic fundamentally and he does this through through ghost guns and a ghost gun is and i know i'm you know what i'm calling them liberty guns Freaking, I'm not going to call them ghost guns anymore. Uh, he, his company Freedom called Firepower. Freedom is Firepower. Freedom Fries. Is Freedom Fries? Freedom Firepower. Undocumented defense tools. <laughs> That's yes. what they are. Guns so, should be like immigrants and in, in income, all undocumented. Yes. So the, the idea here is if individuals actually have the power to make their own tools of defense. And I want to say, I always try to say that as much as possible. I say tools of defense. That's what they are. They're going to hit you with the word gun. And, and as it so happens right now in 2018, that's one of the most effective tools of, self, of defense. It's the gun. But it's simply a tool of defense. What are you defending yourself from? You're defending yourself from uninitiated aggression. Well, who is the 
biggest initiator of aggression on a massive scale throughout history. It's the coercive enterprise. Would that be, yeah, would that be the coercive enterprise? Oh, yeah. What did I win? You, you won a duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you won a duh. So, so his solution, the off-the-leash solution, is not to beg Massa for more power, not to go to Massa looking for a longer leash. The off-the-leash solution is to build your own undocumented power and to make it make it so that yeah, good luck good luck enforcing your 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 anti ghost gun laws and and I'm going to be doing a story I'm going to be writing a story tomorrow I'm going to be I some of the things I do on iState is I'm looking at how news is being written especially when they say when they try to say it's straight news and my purpose is to try to show you folks and many of you already know but not all of you do the things to look for to see how they're trying to nudge you towards their where they want you to think of things so i'm going to be doing a story about somebody covering ghost guns in a very demeaning way and ghost guns liberty guns what do you call them freedom 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 firepower freedom firepower that's yeah that's way more Here's effective than laws I, I do have a couple thoughts on this subject, and there, there's a meme. There, there's always a meme. It's got to be a meme. Um, it's, it's the clueless-looking redneck guy in the camo holding the shotgun, and he's just got the stupid look on his face. And the and the official title of, title of that meme is called Redneck Wonder. So redneck is wondering something. And the caption that I put on one was, well, if the government collapses, who's going to protect my Second Amendment? <laughs> And and that's really the <laughs> that's nonsense. Awesome. That's that, awesome. It, that's the nonsensical thought that these people have, and and the reason that they say things that are not based in reason is because they didn't use reason to come up with their belief system. They they're they're just as bad as the leftists with their emotional outbursts and and, and screeching. But the thing is. Oh, and there's another one. It's the 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 fat guy in the flag shirt that looks like John Candy that's screaming. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, when I when I first saw that guy, I figured, you know, looking at the meme, the what I figured he was saying was, "I'm going to put my whole fist in my mouth." And then the guy talking to him was like, "No, no, you just put your fingers in there, just the fingers." But uh, the, the the caption on the meme that I made for that was. Uh, when, when uh, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats come to take our guns, our police are going to stop them and throw them in jail. Because isn't that, isn't they, that great? Yeah, they, yeah, they have this belief that the politicians are going to be strapping on their own body armor and that the police won't have nothing to do with it. But meanwhile, the police have been making sure that all that 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 these patriots are legal gun owners and following all the rules. So the question is going to be, what's going to be more important to you? your right to keep and bear arms or your desire to be obedient to the government that's telling you that you can't really keep and bear arms. So are you asserting that you have a right or are you asserting that you have a privilege? And what's going to happen is there's going to be a number and it's going to be a, a much smaller number than we would hope for. There's going to be people out there that say, you know what, I'm going to be free. And if that means that I have to uh, not support the thin blue line anymore, if that means that I'm going to be disobedient, if that means that given the choice of losing respect for myself or losing respect for the law, I choose to lose respect for the law and keep myself respect, I'm going to go get a ghost gunner milling machine. I'm going to get a 3D printer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to take it. And when the when the time comes to where it is so difficult to get a firearm in a legal manner that the only option will be to do it illegally, there will be a surplus of these firearms out there from people that have seen what is happening. And they will have these firearms available for people. And they will be so plentiful that the government trying to stop it trying to stop these firearms will be like trying to cut the grass on a big giant 20 acre lot with a pair of scissors. Yes. That's my point. There, exactly. It's there was a strategy 
in in fighting against the war on drugs and in, in particularly cannabis. And I don't know when the strategy came out. I don't know who originated with it. But the, the strategy was to take pot seeds and plant them all over the place on public property. Throw them in the bushes at the police station, the public library, the city hall, the city park, the the, the trails along oh, the Johnny river. Johnny Potty that, that, Seed. Yeah. Johnny yeah. Potty yeah, Seed. Johnny Potty Seed. <laughs> Make it so plentiful that they – that the cost of coercion is raised by having all these people going around trying to trying to fight a war against an unarmed plant and losing miserably. Yeah. And make it so prolific that it can never be stopped. And that's the key. The cost of coercion, that's the key. That's this is I mean, I'm all about power. I'm all about understanding the reality of power and how you can tilt the balance of power in your favor and uh Concentrate on that. Concentrate on tilting the balance of power in your favor and helping others do the same in whatever you do. Uh, I mean, there may be circumstances that would arise that maybe there be a, uh, an exception to this, but whatever you do, by and large, don't gather in one place. <laughs> stay dispersed. Stay distributed. You, you need to be like the pot seeds instead of one field. You need to be like all over the place. And, 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 and I'm not working to try to change the government. I'm not working to end the government. I'm just working on raising the cost of coercion for the government. And as the cost of coercion is raised and it becomes more and more expensive for the state to try to keep people in line the way they want to keep them in line, they're going to have to raise taxes and they're going to offer less direct benefit to people and more and more people will be looking at, you know what, man, this ain't working. I, I, I want to get paid. I want to, I want to make myself a decent living and this ain't working. And then they'll turn to alternative products and services that are being offered off the leash. I think that's a good place to end it. You got any last mar uh, uh, comments here? Uh, I, you know what? I don't think there's a whole lot more that could be added. I, I, I think we hit the nail on the head. Yeah, pretty much. So on that note, uh, there is no headlines you may have missed tomorrow because tomorrow's Friday. Headlines you may have missed will be back uh, Monday, and that's on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. And it's a picture. It's the it's the Paul Gordon in which I'm wearing, uh, I think, like a vest outfit and a and a tie. And if you do friend request me to listen to headlines you may have missed, give me a little notice, like a little PM, and let me know that that's that's why you did it. Because then I'm more likely to accept your friendship, even if I look at your page and I'm like, meh, you know. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back on this. On this Facebook page, Liberty Principal Facebook page, next Monday at somewhere around 9 to 9.30 p.m., depending on when Professor Rambo gets available. And we'll be doing Is Daily Monday. We'll be doing Full Auto, which is guns. We'll be doing iWorld, talking about world news that's not getting a lot of focus. And then we'll end with some iPrepper, some prepper-type stuff. And if you go to this uh, show page, which is linked in the description on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, if everything, oh, we lost Mr. Sa uh, Sander, Sanders, sand it out. So if you go to the, <laughs> so if you go to the Facebook page, uh, uh, and, uh, well, if you go to the show page, if everything goes right, as far as the tech is concerned, then in about an hour or so, you should get the audio version of this show, the YouTube embed, as well as the Facebook embed. And uh, I thank Lou Sander for being with me again for another Is Daily Thursday. And uh, it looks like he's been droned. I think, you know, he'll survive. We'll survive. We'll all push on. We'll see you on Is Daily Thursday next Thursday 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principal Facebook page.